fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Walking into the building for the first time after the shooting, it was crippling, but it had to be preserved. In response to the Pulse nightclub shooting that affected the LGBTQ community, Barbara Poma, owner of Pulse, founded the One Pulse Foundation to honor Pulse victims and survivors. If you're an ally of this community, speak out. There are more of us together than apart. It is the power of love in its rawest form. Join the fight for LGBTQ acceptance. Learn how at lovehasnolabels.com. Brought to you by Love Has No Labels and the Ad Council. You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMC FM at HD1 San Francisco. An Odyssey station. Good morning! Yeah, yeah, Ria! It's time to wake up. <laughs> it's five, and we're live. Oh, is this thing on? I don't care. I want him to hear. This is the pregame show, your early morning shot of sports on 95.7 The Game. Come on! Oh, yeah. It's the free game show. Welcome in. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I am your host, Joe Spadoni. If you're just getting off work, it's early, it's late, whatever it is for you. Welcome in. If you're getting ready for school, getting ready to drop the kids off, go on a trip, just can't sleep. Maybe this is the only way to put you to sleep. Well, that's the case. I'm glad I could be therapeutic. I hope it's the opposite for those of you just waking up. And if you need to wake up on a, ga- a, d- a day like today, I don't know what to tell you. We got Kings Warriors game five. Winner of this game, more often than not, they win the series. Who's it going to be? Is De'Aaron Fox going to play? Broken finger. His left index finger. His left-handed shooter. How's that going to affect him? Stephen Curry. What does he have for an encore? Clay Thompson, can he still do what he's doing? We have so many different storylines, so many different vignettes. All of that's going to be broken down right here this morning, the pregame show. We only got an hour, but don't worry. I like to think of us here on the pregame show as the appetizer for the main course that is 95-7 the game. And you know what? Sometimes, people, just sometimes, not sometimes, it's all the time here on the pregame show, the appetizer is better than the main course. I mean, come on. Chips and salsa for days, am I right? Mozzarella sticks? I don't need any I don't need any filet mignon after that. I don't need any burrito. Just give me chips and salsa, chips and guac, whatever the appetizer that you like. That's what the pregame show is here. So 888-957-9570. That is the number for you to get involved. As well as the YouTube and Twitch portions of the show. Search 95.7 The Game in the search bar. Favorite 95.7 The Game. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. We are up and streaming. Hello to all of you. It is early. Zach, GK, Rennell, Morali, love all y'all chiming in this early. And it's a massive game. It's huge. And we're going to have all the coverage all day right here on 95.7 The Game leading up to Warriors Live, which will be at 6 o'clock right here on 95.7 The Game with John Dickinson. He's fired up before tossing it over to the great Tim Roy, who will have the call at tip-off at 7 o'clock. And again, all the pre- and post-game coverage, all postseason long for the Golden State Warriors is right here on 95.7. The game. We've got tier cards if you're on Twitch and YouTube. Look at this. Someone left this for me. Gold-blooded, baby. Let's go. Oh, uh, uh. There we go. See that? It's kind of hard with that. I'm in like the single camera. It's kind of... Is that? Yeah. Is that? Yeah, there we go. Gold-blooded. Full disclosure, I used to work in promotions for 95.7 The Game. So I used to hand these things out left and right at all the big games back at the old Oracle before they went over to Chase. So uh, the cheer cards are a little near and dear to my heart. Love a good cheer card. And uh, maybe, just maybe, you will see some of those at the game tonight. Again, the number, if you'd like to get involved, call or text is 888-957-9570. And I guess the big question mark for tonight's game is De'Aaron Fox, how's he going to react to that injury? He has been the best player in this series. 
And that's not a bias. That's nothing. Being the home of the Golden State Warriors, you know, Stephen Curry, he's the best player in this series. Like, if you're going career. But a game in and game out, most important and the most dynamic, it's been De'Aaron Fox. I don't even think it's been close. That guy, his ability to get in and out of the lane, pick and pop, any stop, it's just been unreal to watch. And it sucks that he had the injury, but I don't think he's going to let that slow him down. We're going to get to some of his sound from yesterday. He spoke around shoot around. Ramona Shelburne joined the motor, uh, morning roast yesterday. That's actually pretty good. The Ramoni, Ramorning roast. Yeah, I'll workshop it. Well, that wasn't the best. We'll scrap that one. But Ramona Shelburne, ESPN senior NBA writer, joined Bonte and Shasky yesterday. She had some interesting thoughts, not only on the dubs in this series, but I think she likes them winning the West. And you know what? It's getting very, very interesting around the NBA. The Hawks, not dead yet. And here's Young. Backtracks, 5-2. to two. Young lets it go. Ice cold. Gus Johnson. Oh, always great to hear Gus on the call for TNT there. As the Hawks extend that series, it's going back to Atlanta for game six. As Trey Young, he's cold blooded. Say what you will about the Hawks this season and the last few seasons. That man is ice cold in the clutch. And he was last night. What the hell are the Celtics doing letting him shoot that? Let anyone else beat you. No Murray, obviously. He was suspended. I'm forcing anyone else, Bogdanovich, anyone else. To get a shot up there. Just going one-on-one ISO with Trey Young. Guy can shoot it from full court if he needed to. I don't know what you're doing there, Joe Missoula. That's the rookie head coach, though. It's a rookie head coach and not taking timeouts at the right time, letting it bleed, 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 bleed. And eventually, bit him in the ass. Apparently, as the Hawks are going back to Atlanta, they double-booked an event. Apparently, Janet Jackson's supposed to perform there, too, on uh, Thursday or whatever it is now they're going to be playing. So... That's going to be interesting. Is Janet Jackson going to perform at halftime and then wait, and then after the Hawks game, she can perform? I guess whether it's a win or not, it's going to ultimately decide that. But no, just being fun here. I'm trying to think of a pun, but Janet Jackson was a, a little bit before my time. Turning 30 in about two months, and dreading it. 888-957-9570. So the Hawks remain alive there. Unfortunately, the Timberwolves, it was night-night for them in Denver. 30 seconds, Jokic, then a little hesitation, puts it in, and he's fouled. And Jokic putting him on his back. Putting him on his back, indeed. Forced to foul, got to the free throw line, right there. An improbable finish here. Made a big rebound defensively. A put back on the offensive rebound. Jokic stepping up when his team needs him. He was clutch. He was not very great shooting the ball last night. I think he only had was like 9 for 20-something, something ridiculous. But he got the job done when it mattered most. They closed it out. Anthony Edwards, he's been a baller the last few games, putting the team on his back. And he tried to do that yesterday. 29 points as well as 26 from Carl Anthony Towns. But it just wasn't enough as the Denver Nuggets, the number one seed, and the best record in the West moves on, and they are going to face the Phoenix Suns. Yes, the Suns took care of business yesterday in Phoenix, Arizona, taking out the Los Angeles Clippers, 136 to 130. Again, no Kawhi in that game. Russell Westbrook tried to do his best. A lot of bad turnovers there, but ultimately it is the Suns who prevail, and they move on. Norman Powell, 27. Again, Russ, 14, 8, and 8. A lot of turnovers from Russell Westbrook. Not a great shooting night. And the Suns, I think it was a lot more harder than they made it. You know, when you play a team without Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, you're thinking, oh, we got Kevin Durant, we got Devin Booker, we got Chris Paul, we got DeAndre Ayton. Well, you know what? Credit to the Clippers and Norman Powell and all those guys. They made it very difficult for that Phoenix Suns team, and no one really gave them a shot at all. And they pushed it, they pushed it, and then ultimately it was too much for them. So the Suns are going to be taking on the Nuggets next round. We still got one side of the bracket remaining in the Western Conference yet to be determined. Lakers and Grizzlies, they're playing today. That's going to be the early game starting around 4.30 in Memphis. Grizzlies hoping to stay alive and extend that series. Lakers looking to close it out. They lead three games to one. And another series over in the East, 
that could be out and it would be a major upset from playing team to knocking out the number two seed. The Heat taking out the Milwaukee Bucks? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Did that happen? The Heat taking out the Bucks? Giannis? And what's going to happen there? That storyline. Are they going to blow up that team? Budenholzer, he's going to get fired? Jimmy Buckets putting the team on his back? Can he do it? It's in Milwaukee. And Giannis, he plays well at home. He plays well damn near every game he's out there. He's going to have to put the team on his back a la Jokic late in that game if they're going to want to extend that series. So a chance for the Miami Heat to close that one out. And then the main du jour, the filet mignon of the evening, whatever meal you like. I personally baked chicken with some cherry tomatoes, garlic, and basil. Sounds delicious right now at 5, 10 a.m. If I don't say so myself. Warriors Kings tonight. Be there at B Square right here on 95.7 The Game. Again, Warriors Live at 6 o'clock. That is the main course, and I cannot wait for this game. Is Fox going to play? Well, Ramona Shelburne, who joined the morning roast yesterday, she says, I think he plays. I think Fox is going to play. I know they yeah. listen to Doubtful. Yeah. Probably not trying to put any pressure on him, but right. I, I know the, I know De'Aaron pretty well. Mm-hmm. That, that guy's going to try to play. It's just a question of how he can, how well he can play with that. And, I, you know, we'll just see him go right a lot. He's going to drive a lot. He's just going to try to finish with his right hand all the time. And, like, maybe it'll affect his outside shot, which, you, you know, you don't, or, or you sag off him a little bit, make it a little, you know, you make it a little harder on him to drive because you're going to sag. You don't believe he's going to shoot a three, but. I wouldn't count that guy out at all, knowing, knowing him the way I do. And if you don't believe Ramona Shelburne, Momo, as some, uh, some call him in the uh, afternoon, just ask Fox, uh, De'Aaron Fox himself. It's going to be the cliche. It feels regular season. Probably don't play. Sit out for a week or two. See how it feels. Uh, but right now, there's no no ifs, ands, or buts. Uh, I'm, I'm fine. No ifs, ands, or buts. A little hard to hear there because it's shoot around and hear the balls bouncing in the back, but... You heard it from De'Aaron Fox himself. What does the Fox say? He says, no ifs, ands, or buts. I'm playing. And here's more from De'Aaron talking about his injury. I don't don't think it's a big deal, but obviously, uh, depending on how much it gets hit and things like that, then I feel like um, the pain will increase. But if it was to stay the exact same way it is right now, I'll be fine. If it stays where it is right now, he will be fine. But it can get worse. And that's, you know, slippery slope there for a guy that the Kings need to play well. They ain't winning this series if he's not playing well. He needs to be the alpha like he's been this entire series. It's not going to be Sabonis. We can wipe him. He's he's done. He's he's an afterthought in this series. Which is unfortunate if you're a Kings fan because you were hoping, hey, if we get De'Aaron Fox and Sabonis both playing well and playing like all-stars, we're winning this series. Well... One of them has showed up. The other one has been pretty average. And DeMontis Bonus, is he going to step up? Are the Kings going to feel like the more desperate team tonight in Sacramento? That's going to be a raucous environment. Who's going to the game? Let me know. 888-957-9570 from the 510 on the Comcast Business Text Line. Again, call or text. Sweep the leg, smack the finger, whatever it takes. Ah, we're not dirty here. No. Want the players at their best. They're going to smack the finger. Although, there may be some inadvertent smacking of the fingers. It's just, that's what happens. There's been a lot of inadvertent, actually, things happening in a lot of these series. A la Philadelphia, last round. Kings and Lakers, Dylan Brooks, the nut shots, James Harden with the Nets. A lot of inadvertent nut tapping. Is there going to be any inadvertent hand wringing, if you will? Let's hope not. Let's hope Fox stays healthy because... You want to beat a team at their best, and you want to see the best players at their best in the playoffs just as a consumer. So we shall see how much that finger will really hamper De'Aaron Fox. For the Golden State Warriors, who are we looking at tonight, Dub Nation? Who's going to be the person to step up, put the team on their back? Obviously, Stephen Curry. Like This is a situation where you want your stars to show up. Clay, Steph, and Clay showed up big time last game, I thought. I thought he played very, very well. I think a lot of Warriors fans are expecting him to have this monster 40-point performance, 35 or something like that. But he's been playing very consistent and being very good with his minutes on defense. I've been very impressed with Klay Thompson. I don't think he's getting the love that he deserves. 
these past few games. Stephen Curry, is he going to continue to do what he does? Andrew Wiggins, he's been consistent. Draymond Green, wasn't the greatest shooting night, smoking a lot of layups, but you know what? He was getting after it on both sides of the ball. He was getting after De'Aaron Fox. They're getting chippy early in that game. I expect a lot of chippiness early on in this one. It's been chippy the entire series, on and off the court. Not media withstanding. I didn't. I underestimated it, folks. Just how ugly it can get in this series between these two fan bases. I thought, you know what? Close proximity. You know, it's fun. You know, good for the Kings. This has been an awesome year. They're finally going to have a rivalry, and it's turning into a rivalry. There is no love lost between these two fan bases, and let's face it, the media as well. Speaking of which, Matt George from uh, ABC up in Sacramento covers the Sacramento Kings. He's going to join the Morning Rose today. I believe, what is that, 9, 8, 30, 9 o'clock? I'll confirm it here. But he was on uh, a few weeks ago at the start of the series, and he has been... Uh, Enemy number one for Dub Nation, I think, on Twitter and on social media. They had some receipts, I guess, from Matt George from uh, a few years back when the Warriors were just starting their uh, title run. He's like, all right, well, the Kings are out. It's time to root for the Warriors. It's all right. Hey, 10 years ago, he was rooting for the the Kings because the... uh, the, uh, Check that. He was rooting for the Warriors because the Kings got axed. That's all right. Give the guy a break. He's got two first names. I never trust a guy with two first names. Bob Spadoni, the patriarch, always told me. Never trust someone with two first names. Matt George, joining the morning roast in a few hours. Also, Frankie Ice? Frank Isola joining the boys. He's so good. You know Frank Isola. Pardon the interruption, fill in. Around the horn, Sirius XM Radio, NBA. He does it all. He's great. He's going to talk a little Knicks basketball. Knicks? They, they got action. This... Celtic series keeps going. You know, the Knicks, the Sixers, they're licking their chops. You're like, no, what? We got a chance. We absolutely have a chance if that series keeps getting extended. You never know. It's a two-game series now as it pertains to the Celtics and the Hawks, and anything can happen in two games. Celtics were playing with their food last night, and it cost them. Trey Young, he went bonkers. Force someone else to beat you. Are the Warriors going to do that tonight with De'Aaron Fox, or do they even need to? Is De'Aaron Fox going to be hampered so much by that finger injury that the Warriors can now focus on some other players? Keegan Murray, he showed up big time. Is he going to repeat that now at home? Struggled the first few games, seemed to have woken up. Kevin Herter, he struggled mightily in this series. Is he going to step up now being back at home? It's going to be very, very interesting to see the first quarter here. Are the Warriors going to get off to a big lead? Are they going to get down big? What's going to happen? Either way, I'm not smelling blowout. All these games have been pretty damn close for the most part, and I'm going to expect nothing less in this game five. Who's going tonight? Let me know. 888-957-9570. Ernest D on the uh, YouTube chat. Come on, Spadoni. Clay going Pokemon style and evolving into game five Clay tonight. I like that. What Pokemon are we talking about? Are we going Pikachu into Raichu? We going uh, Magikarp into Gyarados? What are we going to here? All right, don't sleep on my Pokemon knowledge. All right? Don't sleep on that. Is he going uh, Poliwog into Poliwhirl? You going Eevee into uh, Vaporeon? Come on, I can go all day here on the Pokemon cons for Clay Thompson, but I don't think they need him to be that. Just do, keep doing what you're doing, Clay. He's been killing it. He had a great game last game. I, th- I think we're sleeping on how good Clay was last game. He had some clutch shots and clutch defense late on DeMontis Sabonis that I thought was a huge factor. I don't think they need game five Clay, quote unquote. They just need everyone else to just keep doing what they're doing. Andrew Wiggins, keep being a factor. Draymond, keep attacking. Steph, find your shot. And that's going to be the interesting part. With De'Aaron Fox, we were thinking of it on the offensive end. What about De'Aaron Fox on defense? Like, I know it's all, it's, you know, it's it's a sport, so you got to attack. You can't feel sorry about the guy's injury. No, you got to attack that guy. He's going to be a liability on defense with that hand injury. You have to keep attacking De'Aaron Fox. Keep him honest. Drive to the paint. Do what you got to do. Is he going to reach more? Get to the foul line. Can they do that? Will they do that? Got to exploit it. Got to exploit it. 888-957-95. 
Ready Whip on the YouTube chat. Poole has to give them something. He is the key, in my opinion. Jordan Poole. Will the real Jordan Poole please stand up? It's been kind of a disappointment. Getting all that money, and yeah, I know the money hasn't technically kicked in yet, but can he have a Jordan Poole-type performance in these playoffs? I think it's going to be a short rotation tonight. I really do. You know, we have saw Kaminga in a few minutes here and there. Moses Moody a couple times, but I think this is the Blue Bloods here. Gary Payton the second, who kind of hasn't really looked like himself for the most part. Dante DiVincenzo. This is where Steve Kerr, as this series goes on and gets more and more pressure-filled, he's going to start relying on these older guys, these veterans, more and more and more and more minutes for those guys. Here's more from Ramona Shelburne talking about the Golden State Warriors and, you know, thinking that they might be the ones to beat in the West now as you look around these playoffs. They look, they look pretty good. There's something about them I don't trust. I, maybe it's the, you have to rely on D'Angelo Russell for such a prominent, prominent role. Maybe it's, like, LeBron, as good as he was last night, um, he was amazing last night. But he was exhausted. Like, mm-hmm. you got, I can't even describe how exhausted this man was when I saw him post game. So, like, the point is, like, can they really keep this up, like, the whole time? So I'll go back. I'll go back on the Warriors. I, I mean... Spending chance for a reason. Hey, hey listen, like, now you're welcome back to the Bay, Ramona. You're, you're all good here now. I know. I mean, I had Memphis and the Warriors in the Western Conference Finals. I thought, well, this will be the year Memphis gets by, and they learned their lesson last year. Uh, guys, I don't think they learned their lesson last year. No. <laughs> no. up how they've played and how they've acted on and off the court this year. So Ramona Shelburne, she picked the Grizzlies there in the West. She's like, eh, that's not happening. I'm going back to the Warriors. I think that's... As these playoffs are taking shape, and I said it, you know, there's going to be some upsets. There's going to be, if the Warriors handle their business around one, which could potentially be their toughest series, now we'll wait and see what happens in this series. I'm not sleeping on the Kings. They could easily win tonight, and all that pressure is back on the Warriors, back at Chase Center. But as it stands right now, God, I love the Warriors' chances to come out the West. Just from what I've seen from the play around all the others, you can say, Spadoni, what are you talking about? It's tied 2 2. The Suns, they handle their business. I don't even know what kind of impression I'm doing to some random sports fan, but apparently it's just turned into some bro from Chico State. Spadoni. <laughs> Kings handle their business. The Nuggets looked good. Lakers look great. What do you think the Warriors are just going to roll through them? I don't think they're going to roll through them, but I'm not betting against them. If I had to bet money right now, which team's coming out of the West, I'm still betting on the Warriors. Absolutely. And to, what, to Ramona Shelburne's point, I don't trust the Lakers yet. They could easily get blown out tonight in Grizzlies, and would anyone be shocked? I wouldn't be. Now, if Dylan Brooks does anything of importance, I'd be shocked. Guy stinks. Total clown show from him. Maybe fly out Shannon Sharp for that game. I would love that. Dylan Brooks shook at the arena formerly called Staples Center. That series has been so wild. John Morant's going to get hurt, by the way, if he keeps jumping like he's jumping. He's playing jump around way too much in that building, playing with that injury. And that's why I'm looking at De'Aaron Fox, a la a John Morant. Similar player, comp-wise, speed, flashiness. They got that three ball. They worked on that shot in their career. They could dunk it. They could do all of it. How's De'Aaron Fox going to look? Because it took Ja a couple games ago to really get going, and then he had that, whatever, 22 straight points in the fourth quarter for the Grizzlies. So it took him a little while in that first half to get going. He wasn't trusting his jumper. He wasn't comfortable. And then as the game went on, and they were down big, so maybe he just had that opportunity to be like, you know what, I'm going to start chucking it. What's Fox going to look like? Is he going to look like John Morant's looked the past couple of games? And Joss looked good. He's looked very good. How's it going to look tonight? Who's your key? What's the key to this game? What's the matchup you're looking for? Is it the coaching matchup? Is it Steve Kerr and Mike Brown? They've been playing a lot of chess back and forth, and it's been very, very fun to watch. At home, everyone has held serve. Do the Warriors finally break through and win that much-needed road win and the first significant one it would feel like all season long? Let me know. 888-957-9570. Here's Ramona Shelburne, last from her, talking about the Warriors, and we're talking about Steve Kerr and the coaching and the Warriors being able to adapt in the playoffs. Here's Ramona Shelburne talking about it. It was interesting to, to see them do that because the Warriors have done that over the years, right? 
you know, I go all the way back to the 2015 finals when they just decide, you know what? We're going to put Iguodala in the starting lineup. We're just going to, we're going to take Bogut out and just go super small. The Warriors have kind of made these chess piece kind of moves in playoff series over the course of their time there. I mean, as much as we think we know the Warriors style of play and you kind of know the main guy, like, They've actually been pretty adaptable throughout right. the playoffs. Like that's that's why they've won so much because you you have to be able to do this during the playoffs and make these kind of adjustments and also not lose your style of play. Adjustments, name of the game in the playoffs. That's why it separates the men from the boys and why I still like the Golden State Warriors. Because say what you will, and I know he's been enemy number one here at times. Steve Kerr is a seasoned, seasoned professional. He is a champion. He's been around multiple dynasties: Bulls, Spurs whatever warriors now he's been there and done that there's nothing in this league he hasn't seen mike brown yeah he's coached to uh nba finals before he's coached in an nba finals in an interim as well as a head coach with the cleveland cavaliers with the lebron james led one he's been there but steve has won it he's done that and as these playoffs go on i'm looking at that head coaching matchup and it's not something we usually do in the NBA, it's more something we look at in the NFL as it pertains to the head coaching matchup. We look at it all the time with Bill Belichick, and it's just like, yeah, we give him the benefit of the doubt because it's Bill. Like, I'm sorry. I'm not putting Josh McDaniels over Bill Belichick in a playoff situation. Although Josh McDaniels did beat him last year with the craziest play I've ever seen of all time. Shout out Jacoby Myers throwing it back to uh, Chandler Jones. Jacoby Myers now a uh, Las Vegas Raider, as it seems. NFL draft tomorrow, and again, yeah, we'll have all that coverage, everything pertaining to the 49ers. Maybe they trade back in. Maybe they trade Trey Lance. All that, we'll have all that locked and loaded all day tomorrow for the NFL draft, and that is round one, day one. Cannot wait for that. There is something special still about the NFL draft that I love. It's that little jingle, whatever it is. It's that Mel Kuyper hair, Todd McShay, all those guys. It gets me going. gets me going. But 888-957-9570, the coaching matchup. Is that something we are sleeping on here in this series? YouTube is on fire. Go ahead and search 95.7 The Game in the YouTube chat or Twitch. We are live and streaming there. G. Cordoba. G. Cordoba's got a little beef with me. I don't know what it is. He was crushing me for even playing the Nick Wright sound yesterday. Didn't even know my take. Just assumed I was going to side with him because I was wearing a Lakers jersey. It's not true. G. Cordoba. All right, listen to the... Get your facts straight and get back to me, as Matt Steinmetz would say. He's saying, I turn on the show and Spadona's already talking nonsense. No, there's no nonsense here. I like the Warriors tonight, and I like the Warriors in this series, and I still think they are the team to beat in the West. Is that nonsense? Is that nonsense, Dub Nation? Let me know at 888-957-9570 as we roll on here on the pregame show. More Kings Warriors talk on the other side of 95.7 The Game. Sorry, but we actually have a wait list for our Monstera. Shaw's greenhouse is really bringing in the green.
on 95.7 The Game. Welcome back. Pre-game show. Joe Spadoni, 95-7 the game. Warriors taking on the Sacramento Kings. Game 5 tonight up in Sacramento at Golden 1 Center. And we'll have all that coverage all day right here on 95-7 the game leading up to Warriors Live at 6 o'clock with John Dickinson before tossing it over to the great Tim Roy, the voice of the Golden State Warriors, who will be on the call for tip at 7 o'clock. Good morning, everyone. On Twitch, YouTube, driving in. If you're listening the old-fashioned way, if you're listening via the Odyssey app, be sure to download that bad boy. If you haven't already, favorite 95.7 The Game for all your Warriors coverage. And you can listen to the Warriors games right there on that app. It's pretty freaking sweet. If you're out and about, you're doing stuff, can't be at the TV, download that bad boy, plug it in in your car, headphones, whatever you're doing. It's pretty awesome. Good morning to Nicole on YouTube. Good morning to Pac for Prez, Pac for Prez, whatever, Kate Taylor, Bay Area, LFG, from Sydney, Australia. Oh, I was going to do a dumb and dumber joke there, but I would have butchered it. So, you know, it is what it is. Lloyd Christmas, one of the all-time characters, by the way. And we were doing some comps earlier. Who was it? Ernest? Or what? Yeah, Ernest D. He was talking about comps, Pokemon comps. Like Clay Thompson needs to evolve into Game 5 Clay, and we had some people on the Comcast business text line. 707. Clay, he needs to turn from Charizard into Mega Charizard. I think that'd be good. I think Fire. Sam's giving me the eye roll. That's a newer one. I'm not into the Mega Charizard. You go from Charmander to Charmeleon, or is it Carmeleon, whatever one, and then to Charizard. And then we got the 415. This is a more this is a better comp that Sam's gonna like. From the 415 on the Comcast business text line. Slow poke to slow bro. That's a perfect comp for Clay Thompson. Because slow bro, yeah, he speaks slowly and stuff like that, but he'll get you. He's got those hard uh the hypno attacks, right? Sam wants to chime in here on this Pokemon chat. I know he does. Sam, what do you got, buddy? No, it's actually a good one too, because I think you know, sometimes you'll sl- you know, slow poke, he needs that little bite on the tail to evo- to mm-hmm. uh evolve into slow bro, and you know, maybe uh get a little uh, bite on uh clay there to Get a little uh, more out of his game because I'd love to see a big clay game tonight. Oh, huge! Just don't stomp on his chest, right? We don't want to, we don't want anything to uh, deal with that. We don't want any suspensions. How's Clay going to do? How's De'Aaron Fox going to do? That's the name of the game. And if you're just joining us today, he said yesterday at shoot around that he feels like he's playing no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's going to be the cliche. It feels regular season. Probably don't play. Sit out for a week or two. See how it feels. Uh, but right now, there's no no way to answer. But uh, I'm, I'm playing. And here's talking about his injury. I don't I don't think it's a big deal. But obviously, uh, depending on how much it gets hit and things like that, then I feel like um, the pain will increase. But if it was to stay the exact same way it is right now, I'll be fine. If it stays the way it is, I will be fine. Well. Throughout a course of a game, it's very difficult to keep that finger away from a lot of people. It's going to be smacking into guys. People are going to be cutting. People are going to be bouncing balls off you and stuff like that. The balls are going to be hitting off the rim. You're going to be trying to dunk. I don't need dunking. How's that going to be for De'Aaron Fox? It is. He is left-handed. It's on the left index finger. And I'm just going through all of it right now as it pertains to basketball. And if I was on the court, it's your hand is involved in everything. In any sport, for that matter, other than soccer, unless you're a goalie. But it's involved in everything. How does he get it to not impact his play? And it's going to impact it on some degree. And to what extent is it going to affect him when it comes to driving, when it comes to penetration in the paint, when it comes to a step back three-pointer? How is that all going to go down? Austin Anderson wants to know the song I just came in with. That was Be Legit. Bay Area native, San Francisco guy. So international. It's a banger. It's an absolute banger. It's good vibes here on the pregame show at 888-957-9570. Good morning, Jay. Listening from Vietnam. Good morning, Vietnam. It's in the uh, the show open. Shout out Robin Williams, RIP. Another San Francisco Bay Area native right there. Go Warriors. That's Young West, 79. We're already arguing about Lakers and Warriors, all that sort of stuff. I've been seeing that in the chat the last few days. Can we just worry about these series 
It ain't over till it's over. We've seen 3-1 leads be blown. I would not put it past the Los Angeles Lakers, LeBron, AD, Darvin Ham, rookie head coach, to blow that series and it go Game 7. I would not be shocked at all. I would not be shocked if this series, Kings and Warriors, goes 7. But the winner tonight of Game 5, more often than not, according according to sources, according to the numbers, more often than not, winner of Game 5 wins the series. Who's it going to be? Something's got to give. The Kings have been winning at home. The Warriors cannot win on the road. Is that trend going to continue? And if it does continue, then odds increase for the Sacramento Kings and their chances of advancing. And you just go back to last game and that game-winning shot opportunity for Harrison Barnes and the legacy-defining shot there for him. Could have just turned all that around, all that negative energy from 2016 when he went from, you know, potential hero to just the old goat saying, which was he was the goat, where just he was the reason we lost, not the greatest of all time goat. He used to be the goat was a bad thing. He was the Billy goat. It was just not good. He went from being hero back to zero, and it could have changed everything. And the legacy for him and the Golden State Warriors. But he missed it. The series is tied. And Draymond Green was actually talking about Harrison Barnes in his past uh, past podcast here. With Dame Lillard as a guest on that show. And here's Draymond talking about Harrison Barnes. I just wanted to play this. Him not getting inv- invited to his uh, wedding. Draymond Green. But Harrison Barnes, I think to this day, still don't like me for KD coming here. And the reality is, bro, it's like, I didn't tell him to trade you. To right. bring KD in. Now the reality is, if KD did come in and you were still here, you would have you maybe had to come off the you would have had to come off the bench just fucking Kevin Durant. And like it just is what it is. If you were still here, I didn't tell them to trade you. But he took it very personally because of the story that came out that I cried to KD in the car or whatever. Right. He took it very personally at me. And so for instance, this dude invite Steph Nim this way, Steph Clay, everybody at this wedding except me. Like, bro, <laughs> bro, you ain't get invited to the wedding, bro. All these dudes was at the same meeting that I was at with KD. They was all there too. You know what I'm saying? However, I didn't take it personally because it is what it is. Like I wasn't invited That's to your wedding. Now it is what it is. I thought it was funny. It, it sucks that you 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 got traded, but you went and made your money. You know, you went and got a great deal. You're still making money, but I did get two championships. And again, I did that. I didn't go in there and ask them to trade Harrison Barnes. I didn't do that. But I did have a conversation with him about how much Kevin Durant could help us. That's Draymond Green from the Draymond Green podcast. Again, his guest there was Damian Lillard talking about not getting invited to his wedding. And there's a lot of speculation about that. I don't think Draymond's ever really spoke to this. This was kind of the first time kind of opening up about that. And he says, you know, he was fine with it. I feel like there's a part of Draymond's like, what the hell, man? Really? Like, we wanted to add Kevin Durant. You're going to be mad at me for that? You're going to be that petty about that? Come on. And Harrison Barnes, he was petty. He invited everyone. Who was it? Was it Richard Jefferson that commented? I think there was a post about this and this with quote. Richard Jefferson, uh, former Golden State Warrior, actually, and uh, NBA champion with the Cleveland Cavaliers and current host for uh, ESPN and analyst, for all their basketball coverage. But he was like, even I got invited to that wedding. Oh, man. Everyone but Draymond was invited to that. It does feel a little soft, but just the drama. That This, this doc that's going to come out with the Warriors, whatever it is, 10, 15, 20 years from now, it's going to be an all-timer. And I can't wait for it. I'm going to be sitting there. Benny's going to be 25 or whatever he is. He's back from... I don't know, Euro trips. I don't know what the hell Benny's going to be doing 25. God, I'm already freaking out about that. We're getting a new dog, by the way, today. We're adopting one. Five-month-old little terrier chihuahua mix. He's going to be like 20 pounds or something like that. He's a small guy, but we're excited. And I just, uh, we're introducing him to two cats who have lived without a dog now for two years. That's just going to be a nightmare. But as I digress here, as it pertains to Harrison Barr and stuff like that, I would hope that they... Draymond Green and Harrison could bury the hatchet after this series, dap it up, be cool about it. Maybe Harrison will never be cool, Draymond, but 
It's not good to hold grudges. The stress on your body, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. I know from experience, stuff like that. Guys in general are pretty good about moving on from grudges and stuff like that. But just don't hold on to them. Just for your health. Physical, mental, it's not worth it, folks. If I could uh, just impart those words of wisdom. Don't hold grudges. It's not good. 888-957-9570. We're going to take one more break, and I will not hold it against you if you decide to go get some food, do what you got to do within these few minutes. But don't go anywhere. Leave us on if you're on YouTube, on Twitch, wherever you're at, because Joe Shasky is going to join me for the crossover next, right here on 95.7 The Game. Hey, Brad. I thought you had a date tonight. Hey, Mom. She just left. Using my phone for a Wi-Fi hotspot backfired again.
Too, not even that. Fucking Atlanta Hawks. Speaking of Hawks, we were talking about dogs getting swooped up by Hawks. Oh, Joey, our lives. I know. This is the pregame show, by the way. Welcome back. I'm Joe Spadoni. That is Joe Shasky. You know him. You love him. Each and every day here at 5:45 for the cross over. No, you love to hate him. If that's the case, <laughs> that's the case. We were just talking about. You know, I'm getting a new puppy today. We're adopting one for the family. It's a family dog, and Jade made sure she's like, oh. Don't. It's not my dog. Like Lola was our old Chihuahua. Lola, R.I.P. That was my dog. But this is a family dog. I was like, okay, sure. The dog's gonna be sleeping with you every night. I know, just know how this. You feels. know how this works. I right? know how this works. All right, it's so gonna be her dog, but I'm gonna be the one to eggs. take it out. Now you're learning. I'm gonna get home. I'm gonna put the baby Bjorn on. I'm gonna uh, have the dog. Uh-huh. It's just, it is what it is. We're in a big dog walking area too, so uh. it's gonna be nice. But he's a perfect size. I showed you the pics. He's about twenty. Gonna be like oh, twenty size. pounds, stuff like that. It's yeah. perfect. Gotta watch out for those hawks, though. Like the big birds will come down and sweep on those little chihuahuas, people. 100%. Keep the harnesses on them. 100%. We were just talking about, um, you know, I'll, well, now that we're on the subject, the Atlanta Hawks and stuff like that. Uh, but this NBA playoffs, Joe, it's it's just been wild. It's been like, incredible. And that's why I'm still put somehow, some way, I'm still, like, if I had to bet, I'm still betting on the Warriors to come out of the West, which is nuts. But the playoff picture is starting to take shape in the West now. We got the Nuggets and Suns moving on next round. Suns kind of playing with their food a little bit there towards the end, but they advanced. No Kawhi, obviously, last night in the loss for the Clippers. Russell Westbrook now a free agent. Do they blow up that? That's going to be interesting to look at. And now we got Memphis potentially getting knocked out tonight. They need to win to stay alive in Memphis. They're taking on the Lakers. And then the one. The one that I feel like it's it's going seven. It feels like Which it one? might. Tonight. Kings Warriors. This series has the best chance I, to go I, seven I out agree. of all of them. I would agree. Lakers, it could happen, but I, I think they take care <laughs> The Hawk Boston one, I don't know. I'm not sure what to make of that. That's an interesting one, right? Yeah, I'm really surprised that Boston's struggling as much as they are uh, with the Hawks. They should have closed that one out. And the rookie head coach, Missoula, not taking timeout, not doubling trade. Force anyone else to beat you. Force Bogdanovich or someone to beat you, right? Yeah. Like, what are you doing there? I mean, I'll even take my, you know, 50 50 with Collins in the corner somewhere. Like, I'd much rather have that. Absolutely. I I don't know. It's very interesting. And something's going on with Tatum. He's he's had a couple of uh, stinkers. Yeah. You know, I don't trust that team. By his standards, I don't. Well, I've you know me. I, I've always said that I don't trust that team. Well, I think they're a bad matchup. But if they if the Warriors end up going back to the finals and play them again, and it's a finals rematch. I love the Warriors that series. I just think really the, Celt- I Cel- the Celtics don't match up well against them. Uh, personally, okay, you would think from like just the players, yeah, personal, you, they would. But and I know maybe the Williams injury changed things last year, yeah. and he wasn't at a hundred percent. I just think something about Tatum and those bright lights when I saw him against Golden State at Chase Center, he just. He shrunk. What I don't about know. Bucks Heat. That doesn't because right now it's three one. I mean, oh, that you know what? That's a good one that has a chance to go seven as well. I think. I I mean, if the Heat pull this off, like in my lifetime, obviously Warriors Dallas, and then there's the Nuggets Sonics way back in the day. I don't know if you remember Dikembe Mutombo falling to the ground holding the ball when he was playing for the Nuggets. I man, this might have been like ninety five. Yeah, I was probably two years old then. I do not remember this. You don't? No, I was a year or two old. I yeah. was born in 1993, Joe. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> but point being is there have been some great first-rounders. Before we, we get on to the Warriors and Kings, because I know we've got all day to talk about Oh, it. totally. You have been one of the staunchest critics of the Clippers. Oh. The assembly, the players that they have, not believing in them. And I'm asking this dead serious. Last 10 years, pro sports, we ripped the Philadelphia Eagles about 12, 13 years ago for their assembly of an all-star team and everybody saying that they're, they're an all-star team. Vince Young, the team. dream team. That's what he said. I feel like this Clipper like thing that they put together is one of the bigger... like They, they just dropped the ball. Oh, totally. They were one of the biggest favorites since like every single year. You looked at it... They Remember at the beginning of this year, they traded for John Wall or whatever it was they got or they signed yeah. John Wall. It was like, oh... The Clippers are now tied with the Golden State Warriors for best odds to win the NBA championship. I remember. They were tied for the best odds. They just were a first-round exit, and everyone was expecting, if they stay healthy, well, guess what? They're never going to stay healthy. <laughs> Kawhi Leonard is never going to be healthy. <laughs> I knew I'd get you shame, going. Shame on me, and shame on any of us in this building. We're like, you know what? I think Kawhi's back. No, he's not. He's never going to be back. Because he's never going to be healthy. It's sad. Ever. It it's sucks. It's really sad. And he's one of the best players ever, but he's never going to be healthy again. And that sucks. Whose body do you trust least? Tiger Woods or Kawhi? I'm dead serious. Uh, well, Tiger's been... Oh, my God. 
He's had like Kawhi's major right next to him. I know, I know. At least all well, Tigers had major, like major <laughs> surgery know, and stuff one like that. Guys in his thirties, the other guys in his forties. It's a good point. I'm not trusting either of them with my money on it, but I, I guess I'd trust Tiger. I mean, hell, the guy made the cut in the Masters at least. I, so, I, but like, I, it's the, wild. And, and you it's know a what? Failure. The and, Clippers. It, I can't believe it's a how massive. monumental they failed. We ripped the bu- we ripped know, KD the, in the in the Nets. We, gonna, we ripped him, and you, you know what? And and you know what? He left the Warriors, and we like to rip KD, and I get all that. He was a foot away from knocking out the Milwaukee Bucks and with going no to one. with no one except except medical tape all over James, James Harden. Harden. He was a shell of himself Remember there, that? and we know James Harden now is a shell of himself since those Rocket days. He's not like that's why I don't pick the Sixers going forward. But no, they deserve to get ripped because you know what? I get that they're the little brother to the yeah. Los Angeles Lakers, but we ripped the Lakers. We have no problem ripping no, LeBron every oh, turn. Oh, they won the bubble championship. Oh, that doesn't mean anything. They won a championship. I mean, people they, ripped the Warriors. People ripped the they ripped the Heat for not winning it all four years. Yes, right. Just because you're the Clippers doesn't mean you get to shy away from all this criticism. Kawhi Leonard chose to go Los Angeles. He chose to go get Paul, he, Paul George. He could have went to the Lakers. Mm-hmm. The Lakers wanted him. Yes. he wanted to. You know what? Yes. If the Paul George thing didn't go through, he would have gone to the Lakers. And you know what? That would have saved his career. He would have been a top ten player Very of all time. Guarantee it. Well, you and know the, what? And then they won a title. I. Do you hear me out here, real yes, quick, yeah, Chassie? Yeah, I want to hear I'm not trying to be some. No, ho- I want to hear this. I'm story. not trying to be some homer, but just think about it. If Kawhi Leonard chooses the Lakers instead, yes. you got LeBron, Kawhi, and Andy. Anthony Davis. Yeah, it's a lot of me- medical tape. It's a lot of medical tape, <laughs> but you know what? That's a lot less wear and tear on each of those guys I, I individually. I, I believe. You. And then so, you have post, and you have perimeter defense yes, scoring. You, I mean, man, you do have a lot there. You have a lot, and maybe you have one or two more championships if you're Kawhi Leonard. Right, mm. like that changes the whole narrative of how we view. Think about Kawhi, best player on a Spurs championship and best players on a and, Raptors team. And, and I took down two different one of the greater teams of the last thirty years, assembly wise. The Heatles and the Golden State Warriors. Yeah. And uh, granted, there was regardless injury. of who was healthy, exactly. And then you go to the Los Angeles Lakers and you win a title there with three different franchises. Yeah, that would have been pretty incredible. And maybe he didn't want to be under LeBron. Ultimately, that was the deciding factor. But you're Kawhi Leonard. You would be it would be it'd be Batman and uh, go back to the analogy Batman and Superman. Yeah, it wouldn't be Batman and Robin. Like like in this analogy, it'd be the Flash or whatever. It'd be Anthony Davis. Like I just think we look back on this and we, and I just don't think they're going to get crushed the way they deserve to be. They deserve to be crushed. They assembled all this talent, didn't win Jack. Steve Ballmer bought <laughs> the team. They're going to get this new arena, and guess I'd what? They're going to get this new arena, and they're going to be bad. Well, they're Russ, not going to be. If you look at that, the series they just played. Russ was one of the best players on the floor, and that's a problem. I'm sorry, I know that's a problem. I'm just, I like, like yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm calling it like I see yeah. it. Like Russ was one of your best players, right? I mean, Norman Powell's carrying you. Norman Powell is carrying Ter- Terrence Mann. I like, like these guys. Man. I like, and I, I know, like Norman I know, Powell. And I like Norman Powell too. But look back to the what was it a couple of years ago? And he was uh, like the fifth best player on the Raptors. Was it Reggie Jackson? Was yes. their best player yeah, a couple years ago? He was. That's right. You need Kawhi Leonard out there. You need Paul George out there, and it's. Too often, like if it, whatever it's a uh, playoff P or whatever, <laughs> or or Kawhi getting hurt, it's just not going to happen. All there. that being said about Kawhi, I take him on the Warriors. Oh my God, heartbeat. are you kidding me? You take him, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, you take him. But can you trust him? That's the thing. Now you can't well, trust him. Well, I, I think he can't be your alpha one. No, he's got to be like a two three. Yeah. It, it like the same way I view Bam, uh, the, the, to a lesser degree, but Bam Adebayo, like. To me, Bam can't be your two. He's got to be your three or four. Yes. Right? And, like, t- if you really want to win championships, in my opinion, Kawhi can't be the one. He has to be the one B or the two to someone else's one A. Yes, I totally agree there. That's Joe Shasky. He joins me. Because physically, I just can't trust him. Absolutely. every Each and every Monday through Friday for the cross, Joe. By the Joe- way, what did you make of the Draymond Green news from Sham Sharania saying that the Warriors want him to come back on a one-year deal? Gamesmanship? I think a little bit. It's interesting. Like, I have no idea how that's going to shake down. Me neither. It, and it does feel like, and we've heard from like Anthony Slater and guys like that who are in the know. It all going to be predicated on how this thing ends. Why did that's it come so out now? weird? Well, why did the Clay thing come out now? I don't know. At the worst time when he had a well, horrible game. Well, I always ask the game. question of like who benefits from this information getting out to someone. Right. Well, the, with the Draymond one, it, maybe the the Warriors are trying to get out in front of it. Hey, we want a Draymond Green back, but he just you know what. Yeah. Right, like maybe he just didn't want, but a one year deal. I don't think Draymond's looking for a one year well, deal. After everything that happened, like he just got suspended for the game, he comes back, he plays really well in that second half specifically, and then all of a sudden, boom! The next day, I don't know. It's just uh, 
These things don't just come out of nowhere. No. I always feel that somebody is floating something for a reason, like agents and whatnot, or maybe even to the team. Like, who knows? But I'm always like, who benefits the most? Who, let me ask you, who benefits most from Sham saying that? I feel like the Warriors, hey, we tried. Yeah, no, that's exactly what it is. I, that's why I said I think it's the Warriors trying to get out in front of this thing, being like, you know what? We tried to keep Draymond, but he was just looking for a bigger contract. We weren't willing to do that. We, we thought about one year, stuff like that, but we just weren't willing to commit Moving forward. Now, how's that going to land with the fan base? I know the fan base. How's that land I, with Draymond? How's that land with... Oh, that's the thing, too. Like, But Draymond said... It's, Absolutely incredible. You know, it's a business. And I love Bob Myers, and I love Joe Lacob. But at the end of the day, Joe Shasky, it is a business. I give myself a three for that. That was pretty, that was pretty good, bad. right? That was not, not bad. bad. I was trying to do the cadence there. I was, and, listening, and, and, I was listening to the Harrison Barnes thing, which is hilarious, by the way. The whole pettiness of Harrison Barnes not inviting Draymond. And I know Draymond says he doesn't care. On some deep level... You kind of care. Like, that's like, come on, dude. Like, no, really? It would have been a Richard bigger Richard Jefferson problem. gets invited no, and no. I don't. Well, it would have been a bigger problem <laughs> if he got invited to the bachelor party, but didn't get invited to the wedding. Ah. Now we can go down the do's and don'ts. You, you know what? If I got invited to the bachelor party, party but not the wedding, I wouldn't be mad at that. Just saying. I feel you on that's that. That's Joe Shasky. He's coming up next to Ponte Hill. for us, oh. not for the groom. <laughs> no, 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 no. Absolutely not. Dude, I... Oh. So awkward. I want to tell, to tell you off the air. I'm not. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm vaping. So that's Joe Shasky. Spadoni stories. <laughs> oh, ooh, that'd be a great, uh, great podcast. Shasky Bonte next right here. Ninety five seven. The game. You're listening to ninety five seven. The game. KGMC FM at HD one San Francisco.